a lot of the fakes are falling off. So I also want to appreciate very much you making those videos, calling out Kevin Samuels and Coach Corey, because it makes it clear for the rest of us that are out here just genuinely trying to learn and genuinely trying to improve. Absolutely. And, and I hate to have to make the spectacle of these individuals because what I'm really doing is I'm leveraging their notoriety to bring attention to inaccuracies. So when Coach Corey says uh, you should get back with your ex, I could care less about Coach Corey. I never heard of him before he was mentioned to me. But what I do care about is you going backward in life. They say that mm -hmm. your rear view mirror is small. Your windshield is large because you should mostly be looking forward. And that look back in your rear view should be very rare just on occasion. It's a small view. Your ex is in your past. And I'm always about teaching progress and forward movement. So I have to instrumentalize these individuals to bring attention to meaningful things. It's just a marketing tool to reach more people. Because the truth is, on the Internet, AMS, and I think AMS gives some good game every now and then, but he's been offering people a dirty glass of water. And because they are thirsty, they will drink if that's all that they have. But when you put that fresh water next to it, it's a no-brainer. People who are wise pick up that fresh water and guzzle it, you dig? And so that's all I'm doing is just trying to put that fresh water next to that third world Iraq, Michigan water, you dig? That's all I'm trying to do. No disrespect to the homies in Iraq. I'm actually trying to go out there, man. I hear y'all got some lovely ladies out there that still know how to follow a leader. You heard me. It looks like we have our brother who came back. He got his um his earphones working. Uh, Chad, talk to you, my brother. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, man, I just really appreciate the gyms you're knowledge. Uh, uh, one thing I really noticed that uh, I was never really a guy of social media until this kind of lockdown kind of came on. And uh, very few men are spiritually driven. That's why you see a lot of the blow-ups around people like Kevin Samuels and Stephas Cold and AMS. Because so a lot of guys are looking for things like mentorship and guidance. And I'm kind of like you in that sense. If they're looking for guidance, it can be – a lot of people can misuse that to make a quick buck off of it. A lot of people – because, you know, it's five or six minutes of these guys ranting and raving. They always got some kind of course on how to be cold or they got some course on how to go to the gym but they're never like teaching you what works for you and what works for an individual. And that's one thing I've noticed about your channel that I was actually attracted to is because you're not saying you have all the answers. A lot of these guys walk around saying that they're an expert on human interaction. Like how can you be an expert on human interaction or things like that? And then you want to make a course and you're just, it's really bad for black men too, because most of us don't grow up with father figures and things like that. And this is kind of messed up that there's real people in the city that do work and there's real teachers that try to influence young men. And these people are trying to kind of go back and just make money off of it. I mean, that's that look, look, is there anything else to say? Not it's, at all. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, Yo. when people ask me about charisma and magnetism, it's very difficult for me to describe how you can fabricate that or how you can create yes. that. Yes. A yes. lot of things I can describe because they're processes. I can tell you about a business process. I can tell you how to create systems. I can tell you how to scale a technology and get products and services out and create money machines. I can tell you about that. One thing I do want to uh, acknowledge, Chad, that you said that really was meaningful to me is like, you're right, this is spiritual. And when you have these guys on here, every five minutes they're asking for donations. Like, mm -hmm. like. I hope that you can go back through all of my lives and never see me say, get the donations up. Mm -hmm. Like, I hope that's the case. Um, not to say people shouldn't donate. Yeah, you should pay your toll if you drive down the road. Mm -hmm. But I have been fucking broke in my life. I mean, I kid you not. And this is, I only wrote volume one of my uh, autobiography in the black box. And I told myself, I'm going to just do this little bit. And if people appreciate it, I might do another one for the second part. But if I wrote the second part, there's this one time I was so broke, I bullshit you not, I was literally homeless. A lot of people say they're homeless, but they're really not. I was literally homeless. And I went to in and out in Las Vegas, ironically. I was in Las Vegas homeless. And I went into in and out And I remember that I wanted to get a double-double and an animal-style French fry. And I think they add 65 cents to make the French fry animal-style, which is to put, like, cheese and, like, special sauce and onions on mm -hmm. it. 
and I did not have the 65 cents to do that. I think I was like 13 cents short. Mm -hmm. And um, I just didn't have it in me to turn to someone and say, hey, can I have, can I have 13 cents? Um, mm -hmm. And it was the most shameful fucking thing I ever felt my whole life. And I will never forget being that broke. And that's why I say the saint and the sinner, because a rich motherfucker or a middle class person who's never been broke, they don't understand what you what you mean when you say you don't have money. Because when you say you don't have money, they think, well, just use your credit card. When you say you don't have money, they think just go ask your aunt to your ask your mom. Mm -hmm. They don't understand zero. They don't understand fucking broke, broke. Right. I get that. And so that's my whole goal is to be in that sewer if I need to, to relate to people on a holistic level. Um, and then to your point about these guys saying they're experts of everything, that's how I know that they're experts of nothing. Mm -hmm. As a businessman, I'm used to passing off tasks and jobs to people who are experts. I hire people who are good at very specific things. Mm -hmm. And even when people DM me on Patreon, I always tell them like, hey, let me connect you with this person because as a CEO, my job is to not have a job. My job is to pass off jobs to other fucking people, to delegate. Mm -hmm. And so that's the mentality I try to bring to everything, which is honesty. And gentlemen, you will thrive when people know you're honest. People will come to me and say, hey, I got $20,000 to spend. I want to build this kind of technology and I'll bring them to the other person. I won't accept their money. So now every time they need something, they come to me because they know I will do them right. So I always get the first opportunity to make the money. And I do want to give a short story about the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad, similar to Stevie, was not a man of means. He was not a man of wealth. He was known as Alameen. He was known as a very honest man. So when there were disputes, they would bring him forward to be an arbiter, to arbitrate and make sure that everything was fair in the discussion and fair in the settlement. Similarly, because he was so freaking honest and well known for being an honest man, when the woman named Khadija, who would become his wife, a very wealthy woman, an older woman, she needed some business done in a foreign land. She had him go on her behalf. He did the business, brought back the money exactly as it was supposed to be. She said, you're a man of integrity. So they married and he went from being broke to having plenty of money, courtesy of a female, probably my <laughs> upon him. 